Hello everybody, I'd like to show you my solution for a age-old problem that these Ford F-150s have. This is a 2004 and it has the classic fuel module failure. When this happens, your fuel pump doesn't run at all. It's all computer controlled. System is a one-way system where the fuel pump turns on and off to maintain pressure based on a computer and a fuel sensor. This is fine until one tiny issue happens in that module and your motor is fine and your fuel system is fine, but the signals from the computer to the pump aren't happening. This is for people who want to modify the 4.6 liter motor for a return fuel line to the tank and a pressure regulator so that when you turn the pump on it runs constantly and the rail gets steady 40 psi so the only important part of this system is this nitrous block and this fuel pressure regulator To get this to work, all you have to do is install this nitrous block into the fuel pressure sensor location, and then you install your fuel pressure sensor on top of the nitrous block. Your fuel pressure sensor will still work, and as long as you get your fuel pressure set right, you won't get check engine lights. So this nitrous block has an escape port here on the bottom. It's an AN fuel fitting. So you need an AN to barbed connector, which goes into this. Fuel pressure regulator. This fuel pressure regulator is set to 40 PSI. You back this screw out to lower the pressure. It comes maybe set to 50. So when this is set to 40, that means that your fuel pressure regulator will be at 40 PSI and as soon as it reaches 40 PSI, it'll open a valve, and this is your return line. So the regulator is holding pressure upstream, and once it gets to that 40, this return line kicks all of the excess pressure and fuel back to the tank. So now when your pump runs, you've got 40 PSI, and you've got a return line back to the tank. So the only other issue to figure out is how to make your fuel pump run constantly because as it's set now it's controlled by a module that's broken. So what you're going to want to do is once you remove the broken module you're going to want to take the electrical plug and jump the outer pins to the inner pins just like in this video here. That's going to run constant power directly to your pump any time that your key is engaged. Jumping it like this will allow you to test your system. Once you're sure you've got it right, you can cut the connector off completely and tie the wires together with wire nuts and electrical tape, um, maybe some dielectric grease, whatever you prefer. There are two other small gauge wires in the middle of that connector and those go directly back to the ECM. You need to be sure not to short those, not to touch those to the power wires or to each other. Those need to be encapsulated in, in electrical tape really well. So at this point you have a vehicle with a return fuel system and you have your fuel pump running anytime the key is turned on. Another thing that this affords you to do is if you wanted to, you could go to an inline fuel pump, which I actually did in this truck. An inline fuel pump just means there is no longer a pump inside of the tank. Rather, it's mounted directly to the frame of the vehicle in line with the fuel line. You cut the fuel line and install it. This is a really great option for people who are having issues or problems with their fuel pump or just that whole sending unit is completely corroded and you don't want to use it anymore you can easily just put an inline fuel pump and that way you're completely bypassing the factory system however if you don't have to do that I would definitely advise leaving the fuel pump in the tank as it is from the factory 
One other thing I want to mention quick is when you're installing your return line into the fuel tank, you take the grommet, pick a place that's not going to interfere with the frame when you raise the tank up again, install that grommet, but on the inside of the tank, you're going to want to install one of these AN connectors onto the grommet. Again, that's on the inside of the tank. Keep that in mind when you're choosing a location to install your bulkhead adapter. That's the silver one because you're going to need to be able to reach into the tank through the fuel pump access hole to screw that AN adapter onto the bulkhead fitting. Now the reason you want to do that is because that black bulkhead fitting has a 3 8 inch barbed connector on one end that you're going to attach some fuel line and measure it out so it drops just to the bottom of the tank. That way when your fuel is returned it's not getting splashed into your fuel tank, creating bubbles and oxygenating your fuel, which you really don't want. It's getting returned through a 3 8 inch fuel line underneath the level of the fuel. It's a really important thing. This vehicle starts and runs with no computer control of the fuel pump whatsoever, which in my opinion and judging by the amount of consternation and problems this causes, is a big improvement. Some people may not think so. Some people may say it's dangerous or there's issues with it, but um, it's really how you put it together, how you do your connections, and how things are connected and mounted that are going to determine whether or not it's a good system or could start leaking or cause a fire. That's up to you to install correctly. And I'm in a pretty remote area in Guatemala. There's not a lot of parts, there's not a lot of modules, and there's not a lot of mechanics to work on these vehicles. So as far as fixing something that otherwise isn't gonna be fixable, that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. If this was helpful, like and subscribe, leave a comment. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them, so go ahead and comment those down below. Thanks for watching.